Hey, what's up, everyone? It's Dance Portugal here, and today we're going to do a new ant care species guide episode. This time we're going to talk about a very interesting, I would say, one of the most interesting species of ant, and also one of the one of the hardest to keep. All right, because today we're going to talk about the infamous or famous Carabura diversa. Also known, or at least previously known in the scientific community as Phytologetan diversus. Alright? So I've got Jeff to do extra work today. Jeff will today say, hear this, hear this. He'll say two scientific names. Watch. Jeff, come on, give it. Carebara diversa. There you go. What's the, what's the other one, Jeff? Phytologeton diversus. Yeah, that's the one. Okay. Now, most of you might know... Caribara diversa, because it's a very interesting species of ant in which they are ravenous, they are bloodthirsty, they are just they have just amazing behavior when it comes to food. They also they get to huge numbers, they are very polygynous, and they have the biggest size difference between worker and major. Alright? So let's start to get into it. First of all, um if I don't get the diverses is a species of ant that is usually is usually had in the in the community as a very rewarding but very difficult to keep species. So first of all, the sizes, which is, which are very impressive. Well, the the queen is somewhere around two and a half centimeters, twenty five millimeters, and the workers, the the normal workers are somewhere around two to four millimeters. Meanwhile, the majors can be as can be as big as 15 to like 16, 17 millimeters. Of course, there are a lot, there, there, are, there are minors, majors, but there's also media, which are workers that are big, but are not yet majors. They, they don't grow to be majors. They stay on that size. But it's it's a uh, an intermediate size. They exist and they function mostly as majors, although they are not so big. Mostly, the colony is composed of workers, which can be like twenty to thirty thousand, just workers, and then a couple hundreds of majors. But if the colony has more than one queen, the colony can easily grow up to be more than fifty thousand, fifty. Thousand workers strong, all right. This is impressive, and uh, the coolest thing is that the colony can accept a huge amount of queens. Remember that the the queens are huge, and the colony can accept um, more than ten queens easily. Now, here's the thing, you know this 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 species is obviously amazing, right? It grows to huge numbers. It grows fast. Let me tell you, it grows fast as hell. So this 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 species is amazing, right? It goes fast. It gets huge majors. It get it it is very aggressive towards food. It's very fun to feed. What's the problem with these species? First of all, they get to huge numbers really fast. All right, so you got to be prepared to up to upgrade setups and stuff like that. Second of all, they have huge majors. That not that's not just a bonus. They, these huge majors, they can chew through anything. So unless you keep them in acrylic nests or a natural setup, if you keep them in white tongue or cork, they'll chew through. <laughs> there's no there's no way about it. They'll chew through it. All right, but it's okay. It's all right. That is not the biggest problem. The biggest problem is how fragile these ants can be, all right? It's not that they are very hardy on humidity. Most sites I find, or I found, at least when I was trying to keep, to care for them for the first time, said that 24 hours without the right humidity and they're all dead. All right, this is completely untrue. And why is that? It's because they live in various places. They live... They can live in, in the places where the humidity is high and constant, like Indonesia, say, or, or the Philippines, or Borneo. But they also live in southern China and places like that, where 
there's no way that the that the temperature is all is always the correct one the 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 temperature actual actually fluctuates so here's the thing humidity uh, i'm sorry i meant humidity but temperature as well temperature and humidity are not the problem and we'll get into those a little bit later the problem is that the workers they're very small they're very active and they don't even eat most of the times they can live a full life without eating because they die very fast they don't live long at all they take about four weeks only to go from egg to 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 adult worker and that's like in the maximum so and they they die really fast and the thing is that without workers the colony dies because the majors cannot do any work and the queen cannot also do any work so the the the, the workers are are essential to the to the success of the colony and if they die and they're not replaced with new ones the colony will die now to be replaced with new ones the brood must develop and for that to happen the conditions must be right and not only the conditions the in the conditions of temperature and, and, and humidity they can be a little flexible what is the actual problem is food and uh, space and everything around it because you need to give them the proper space and the proper the proper way to build a nest also what you also want to do is you also want to give them a lot of food they must be constantly fed and they are not hard to feed all right they eat everything every insect you place in every piece of meat you you can feed your colony without even having feeder insects because they'll easily eat out of raw chicken even cooked chicken as long as you don't do anything else to cook it except water you cannot cook it with olive oil you should not do any sort of thing on the food just or either raw or cooked with water, boiled, boiled. It's boiled that, that you want, nothing else. You can also do red meat or, I mean, cow, pork, everything else. And you can also do fruits. You can also do sugars, sugar honey water. You can do honeydew. You can do whatever. They'll eat everything. You can give them biscuits. You can give them, I don't know, you can give them dog food. They'll eat it. Here's the thing. Make sure that what they're eating is not just filling them up it's actually giving them nutrients that they need give them a lot of protein that's what they need to develop give them a lot of hydrocarbonates because they need that to stay active also in in places that are a little bit more temperate they can spend half a year or i think at least one third of a year feeding 15 per 50 percent on seeds they eat a lot of seeds and some seeds have protein all right so it's they're they're not difficult to feed at all. Keep them with a very diet. They accept everything. Make sure they have protein and they'll thrive. All right. Here's the thing. Getting now into temperature and humidity. They accept. I wouldn't say a wide range of temperature and humidity, but they accept they accept a range. Right. First of all, the the nest should be kept somewhere above twenty seven degrees Celsius, but never above 30 all right the arena should also not go above 30 and should say basically in the same temperature as the nest the nest should have a higher humidity but the but the the outworld should not have a dry should not be dry all right i would say that you should keep the nest parts somewhere close to 80 percent all right, but you can go a little bit lower, and the arena don't go higher than seventy percent. It's it's good, it's fine. All right, never ever let the the, the humidity drop below sixty and and fifty percent. All right, because they'll be harmed by that. They won't die in twenty four hours. I can assure you that one. Also, most people they can get this this colony to thrive for them. After a year or two, the colony will collapse and die on them. And this is because the queens, the colony is in the where there's a phenomenon that happens is that in the tropics, when the the nuptial flights happen, they happen, I'd say, uh, mostly every three months. All right. So they're they're very common and uh, the colonies can do adoption, which means they can take in a new queen uh, recently fertilized. 
and what make what this makes is that in the tropic it's it's very common to have uh, each colony be very poly polymor polygynous, right? Each colony has a bunch of queens, so every queen can take a two to three months break every now and again, and the colony will be fine because there'll be backup queens always producing eggs. So they sort they'll sort of take holidays of egg laying in, in turns, and they'll be fine because they need this little rest because of how many eggs. There, it's a huge quantity of eggs that they have to lay. So in the tropics, they get around the need to to stop egg laying by having these periodic breaks with polygynous, po in polygynous colonies, or just if the colony is polygynous, each queen does not have to lay as much eggs, so they won't need as many stops or as many years of stop. Well, they don't stop the whole year. They stop like two or three months every year. So here's the thing. Most people get this colony with one queen, all right? And it thrives for a year. Maybe it thrives for two years, but the queen has not, has not stopped egg laying a single day. The queen will be tired and the queen will be exhausted. And one day she'll stop and she'll stop for more than for more than three months. And all the, the, the workers will die and there will be no new workers to replace them. And the colony will collapse and fail on you. What you want to do to prevent this is to recreate the conditions they have in temperate regions. What they have in temperate regions is a winter, a sort of uh, a sort of a winter-ish thing, part of the year, because they're still tropical. It's just a little bit more temperate than Borneo, I'd say. So what you want to do is for about six weeks every year you want to keep them in different conditions these different conditions will be where the temperature drops to about 20 degrees during the night somewhere between 15 and 20 don't go below 15 and 16 they'll freeze but in the day you still have to give them 20 to 30 degrees so they can forage and they can still you know, they won't hibernate, they do not hibernate, but they'll go into a sort of semi, semi-dormancy stage where they can, where the, the brood takes more time to develop, the queen doesn't have to lay as much eggs, the queen takes a little break, but the workers also have a, slow, uh, a slowed down metabolism due to, to the cold, so they won't die as fast. This allows the queen to have a little breaks, and this allows your queen to live longer and to keep laying eggs in, in a way that allows the colony to thrive for longer. Now, this is basically it. This is basically everything I have. But first of all, I just want to say how amazing these ants are if they thrive for you. All right. They are just the most ravenous of ants. They can strip down a carcass of small of small prey, and by small prey I don't mean insects, I mean vertebrates. They can strip down a carcass of small vertebrates in a day or two. They are amazing to watch eat, they are amazing to watch build nests because they build huge chambers inside of the nest. They're also amazing to watch take care of the brood because of how much food they have. Also, if you, if you want to keep them right, if you want to know if you're doing it right, what you want to do is have them nest in, a, in, for example, an acrylic nest where you can see the brood. And if they have a lot of brood and if the larvae and eggs are glistening, if they're shiny, it means that the brood is doing fine and that you're doing okay, all right? So the best setup you should, you should do is an outworld with soil, with anything that can retain moisture in the bottom and then a nest connected to that. If they decide to move into the out, to the outworld, you just up ventilation there while upping moisture as well because ventilation takes out moisture. But also, what you want to do is maybe let it dry out a bit. Either you, so you hyperventilate it or you let it dry out a bit and they'll move back into the nest that's more humid. This is great because it's a simple setup to have. It's it's a thing that everyone can do. Because you know, they don't they don't get along with a lot of DIY stuff because 
they can they can most certainly chew through a lot of or a lot of the stuff that DIY nests are made out of. So this is what I what I suggest: get a a factory made acrylic nest, and for the outdoor you can do a drilled aquarium or buy a factory made acrylic. Uh, outworld for ants now these ants are great these ants are sort of considered the holy grail of ant keeping and I have kept a colony for about two years I think yeah they did not collapse on me I actually ended up giving it away and it was doing great and it only had one queen I don't know how they are right now but I don't have them anymore and I I really want to get another and get to starting a big Caribbean versus empire with you watching all the, watching the process all the way through maybe it will fail you know the 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 probability that you will fail while trying to get one of these colonies to thrive for you is big and it's not just in the first weeks i mean it's it's a very big possibility in the first weeks but then it does not go down by a lot because the colony can always collapse on you. It's very easy for them to collapse on you. These ants are taken or are, are said to be the army ants of Asia. They're also called marauder ants. So the, the common names of them attest to the ferocity and the, the glorious chaos that they create when they send out their, their massive swarm trails of ten tens of thousands of workers just in one swarm trail to find food for the queen and for the workers, for the brood. These ants are a force to be reckoned with in the habitats that they live in. But they are also a force to be reckoned with try when you're trying to keep them. So that is it. That is all I have. I hope you your love for Caribari Diversa grew because I know almost every single ant keeper would love to have one and I hope this video helps you understand how to be better at keeping Caribbean diverse. Now, I know most people who keep them need help. So if you know someone who keeps them and needs help, um, share my channel with them. Get them to watch me and get them to ask me because I will help them. I'll get them to do their best, to be the best end keeper they possibly can. And this is what I want to do with all my videos is to make sure that everyone becomes the best end keeper they could possibly be. So please, like it, subscribe, share it, and see you in the next one. Bye-bye.